Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here at Able Cine in Burbank, California, and today I'm going to talk to you about this camera, the Panasonic AU EVA-1. I've been using Panasonic cameras since, well, I still own a DVX-100, and apparently, I don't know if it's true, the batteries from that camera will actually work on the EVA-1. But what is it about this camera that makes it unique? Well, number one, it's under $7,500 US for a super 35 millimeter uh, sensor-based camera. And it is a 5.7K sensor. So there's a, a sensor in here that is considerably larger than our resolving resolution, which will normally be either DCI 4K, 4096 by 2160, or UHD, which is 3840 by 2160. It is also designed in a way that everything is part of the camera body itself. So you can take the handle off and you can take the grip off of the camera system, but all of the functionality of the camera is within that main body, including the two XLR inputs. So here's a couple of things that I like beyond just sort of the design of the camera body and how light it is. Number one for me is probably this home button. And when you press this home button here, we get a display on the LCD and we can do things like change our white balance and we can change our shutter. We can change basically our color space and how we're routing all of that stuff. So that makes it very, very easy to use the camera system. And something you should know about uh, this particular camera system is when you are selecting V-Log, you are not only selecting your gamma, and there is a 14 stops of dynamic range in this camera system, you're also selecting wide color gamut. So unlike some cameras that are on the market where you go into menus and you will choose what your gamma curve is going to be or your log curve and then you're also going to go in and choose what your color gamut is going to be uh, that could be p3 it could be 2020 it could be a wide uh, or a wider color gamut on this particular camera they are connected to each other. So when you choose V-Log, you're in a log recording, you are taking advantage of the sensor of the camera, getting the most dynamic range that you can out of the camera system, 14 stops, and you are also recording in a wide color gamut that is larger than 2020. So when you want to target and you want to do trim passes in post to different color spaces, 2020, P3, 709, you can do that very easily. And I really, really like this because we're seeing audio meters here. We're seeing all of our routing in terms of where everything's going and what the color space is. Time code, of course, we can see what codec we're using. We can see what the resolution and frame rate is. So that's pretty awesome. Um, let's step out of home here and take a look at a couple of other things that I like. One of them here, which is kind of, I think, something that a lot of people may not notice right off the bat, is this particular camera includes a timecode terminal. So that port on the camera system is not something that we normally see in a sub $7,500 large sensor camera system. And it was probably one of the first things that I noticed about the EVA 1. There are two SD card slots in the camera system. Generally, most people would be putting SD XC UH2 uh, class three, but if you wanna really take advantage of what this camera is gonna give you in a future firmware update, and eventually they will add uh, 400 megabits intra recording, 10 bit 422 to SD cards, then you're gonna to wanna to look at at least V60, but probably V90 cards in terms of what's gonna sit in the camera system. Uh, high frame rate recording up to 60 frames per second in 4K, and also true DCI 4K. So I'm gonna go in here to my system settings, and if I go into system mode, uh, we're just gonna take a look at that. We have our frequency, and you can see that this is a true world camera here. And right now I have it set to 2398. And down here under main pixel, we can see the different resolutions that we can choose with the camera. And currently I'm on a UHD resolution, but I could choose a DCI 4K if I wanted to. So that would just switch over to DCI 4K. Now currently in terms of our codecs, we have a 422 10-bit long GOP codec at 150 megabits per second for our 4K resolutions. Again, eventually with a future firmware update, we will have a 400 megabits per second intra codec 
that will also be 10-bit 422. So I am very, very excited about that in general. So if I exit there, we can go in, and I'm just going to back out here, and we're going to take a look at some of the camera settings. And we're going to talk about one important thing in here, which is the exposure index, and the fact that the Vericam and the Vericam LT are somewhat unique in terms of camera systems because they, from an engineering standpoint, have taken the sensor and they've created two base ISOs. On those cameras, it's 800 and 5000 ISO. And of course, it's pretty obvious when you would use either of those. If you are in a, let's say, narrative production environment or you're working with a larger crew, you have more lights that are available to you then you might rate the camera at 800 and use it that way. But in documentary situations or in situations even for narrative where you do not have a lot of light available to you, you can actually rate this camera at 2500 ISO. So not 800 and 5000 like the Vericam, but the EVA one does have two base ISOs and those are 800 and 2500. So if I go into this menu and I choose ISO select, I can then go in and I can do this with the touchscreen, but I'm using the actual camera body itself. And I will now choose my 2500 base ISO. And when I go in here now, I can change that ISO from 1000 in its, uh, in its default all the way up to 25,600 ISO. And if I go back into the menu and I choose the 800 base ISO, just so that you can see what that is, and now I go in, I can change my ISO in its default from 200 ISO up to all the way to 2000 ISO. So for me, that's another big one in terms of the camera itself. Um, it does have electronic image stabilization. It does have all of the normal stuff in terms of ND filters, two, four, and six stops of ND. It has a waveform monitor. Um, the tools that we expect in a professional camera system and one other thing that I think is going to be really interesting in the future, because this 4K image is derived from this 5.7K sensor, uh, in the future what Panasonic is going to do is they are going to open up this spigot here, the SDI spigot, and they're going to allow you to push a raw 5.7K image over there. Um, so that's going to be pretty awesome. Um, so here it is. This is sort of the sort of brief overview of the EVA one and some of the things that I think are really, really interesting about the camera system. Price point is great. Time code port, love it. The fact that we're going to get an all I uh, high bit rate 10-bit 422 codec that we can shoot in 4K internally to SD cards to me is really special in terms of the camera system. And it has the buttons and the knobs that you would expect to see in a camera like this. And more importantly, I like the image that I'm seeing. I like V-Log and it's giving us that 14 stops of dynamic range, that wide color gamut. There are already plenty of LUTs on the market right now that you can apply to V-Log because the Vericam and the LT have been out for so long. Um, and this camera should fit nicely into those cameras workflows as B and C cameras, or you could get a couple of these and use them on your productions across the boards. There will be a more in-depth overview of the EVA 1 from Able Cine, so look out for that, and thanks for watching.